word was made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. And Let us pray in the faith of Christ and in your name. Set before the eyes of your children and servants the great love and great humility of Jesus Christ, your only Son, who for us and for our salvation came down as at this time from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, his mother, and was made man to whom with you and the same Spirit be all honor, majesty, glory, and worship, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus, Christ of Bethlehem, for love of men and women made man, create in us love so pure and perfect that whatever our heart loves may be after your will, in your name and for your sake, who now lives and reigns in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. in excelsis Deo.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. 
Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you in this day is born in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem, and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Thanks to Charlie Brown, most of us have been convinced that we ought to be in search of the meaning of Christmas. We already know what Christmas is, the celebration of the incarnation of God in the fact of the birth of Jesus. But because it has become so commercialized, Christmas also seems to us like it seemed to Charlie Brown to be easily trivialized. And so we have been convinced of the need to look deeper for its meaning. And you never know where that search for the meaning of Christmas might lead you. 
I was surprised to discover that it could lead me to the Royal Tank Regiment in Bovington in the south of England, where I traveled last month with the 1st Troop Philadelphia City Cavalry, whose men I serve as a chaplain. At the Royal Tank Regiment, I was surprised to learn some important but esoteric and potentially life-saving information. Frankly, I wondered at first if this information could ever be of any use to me. Christmas makes me think that it could certainly be of use to someone. Let me try to explain. The information was shared with us by an expert in military history at the Tank Museum, which is just down the road from the Tank Regiment HQ. On being introduced to tanks in large numbers for the first time, I quickly realized that my chief interest in tanks is in learning how to turn them off. <laughs> so I was very pleased indeed to pick up this valuable piece of information at the Tank Museum. What I learned was this how to disable a tank. In truth, I only learned how to disable one specific type of tank, the T-72. But the T-72 happens to be one of the most commonly used tanks in the Russian army. About 25,000 of them were built in the former Soviet bloc, and I'm told that the Russians still have about 9,000 of them. It seems that the, C, the T-72 has a blind spot directly behind it, so that if it is advancing with its turret and its gun pointed forward, the crew can't see someone sneaking up behind them. This is handy to know. <laughs> More to the point, and I'm a little fuzzy on the details here, I really should have been taking notes. Apparently, unless the tank has fully and freshly charged batteries, which I'm told is not the norm in the field, for some reason or other, the tank's water supply is required in order for it to start. This was explained to us, but as I say, I wasn't taking notes. And if I remember correctly, on the back of a T-72 tank, on the right-hand side, as you look at it from your sneaking up from behind vantage point, at about chest height, there is a little nut or screw cap or bolt head, maybe a little bit less than an inch across. And if you can open up that little nut or screw cap or bolt head using a knife or a screwdriver or a Leatherman multi-tool, <laughs> then you can pretty easily drain all of the water from the system in the tank, water that is crucially needed in order to start the tank. All you'd need is some plastic tubing. And what I'm told is this, that if the water has been drained from that little access point that you can reach by sneaking up behind it, if, you, if the water is drained from that access point and the batteries are not like new, then the operator of that tank will not be able to start the tank when they want to. I am not making this up. This is actual fact. And a tank that cannot start is a tank that cannot go anywhere. And a tank that cannot go anywhere is a tank that has been largely disabled. Now, I do not know that I will ever be in a position to use this knowledge, which seems actually kind of difficult to come by, and yet potentially extremely useful, maybe even life-saving. And so I am passing it on to you, dear brothers and sisters <laughs> in Christ, and to anyone else who can hear me, just in case this information might come in handy for you someday. I call a sermon like this practical religion. <laughs> There's a part of me that wants to spend Christmas recruiting a band of acolytes to come with me around the world armed only with Leatherman multi-tools, sneaking up behind T-72 tanks and disabling them. Now that is a crusade I could get behind. <laughs> of course, if you got good at disabling one kind of tank, then you might start to wonder if you could disable other models too. And eventually, if you come from a nation with a mighty army, you would not only dream about disabling the weapons of your enemy, you'd also start to imagine that your own tanks might be better off standing still too. This is the risk of being taught how to disable a tank. It could become addictive. 
You'd surely like, you'd surely like it, wouldn't you? So I'm sharing this esoteric knowledge, which consists of information that I don't know what to do with. I take it seriously, though, and I want it to make known what has been told to me about these tanks in case you ever need to disable a tank, or in case there is someone listening from afar who could disable a tank this very Christmas and bring a little bit more peace into the world. Come with me now to Bethlehem, where the shepherds have heard the message of the angel and the singing of the multitude of the heavenly host. What the shepherds found when they arrived at the manger in Bethlehem was in fact not an unusual sight. They found a newborn child with his parents in a certain amount of discomfort. The shepherds had assisted at many births during lambing season and probably a few childbirths at home too. And the circumstances they found by the manger in Bethlehem were less than perfect. Parents unmarried and unprepared, stuck in the shed out back, the baby clothed not in radiant beams of heavenly light, but in ordinary swaddling bands that might not keep him sufficiently warm. What the shepherds found in Bethlehem may not have quite lived up to the hype that the angels gave it, is what I'm trying to say. But of course, it also amounted precisely to the sign that the shepherds were told that they would find when they got there. When they arrived, maybe they knelt beside the manger and cooed at the baby there. Maybe there was a shepherd among them who encouraged his friends to gather at the manger with him and bow their heads and say a prayer, thanking God for this child and praying that God would protect the little baby and his parents, all of whom were clearly in need of protection. Maybe they put their arms around each other's shoulders as they knelt there, or maybe they held hands linking up with each other and with Mary and Joseph too, as they said their prayers and concluded them saying, Amen, 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 on that not quite so silent night. As they departed, maybe one of the other shepherds asked of his friends, guys, Didn't that seem awfully normal to you? I mean, I know that the angel was terrifying at all, but where's the good news of great joy to all people? Sure, every child gives glory to God, but seriously, what was that multitude of the heavenly host going on about? I mean, it's a baby in a manger, come on. But maybe another shepherd, the one who prayed maybe, replied, my friends, What we have seen tonight, we may not completely understand or comprehend, but we know this, that the child is a gift from God and that he will be our savior, our Messiah, our living Lord. The prophets foretold that such a one anointed by God would come. They said that he would bring righteousness, that he would bring forgiveness, that he would bring healing, that he would bring peace. In fact, they called him the Prince of Peace. And somewhere, they said that a little child would lead us into God's promises for us. It's true that this situation is confusing and a bit unclear. It's true that we seem to have been supplied with a revelation, the meaning of which is uncertain to us. It's true that we have information that we don't know what to do with. But I say we take the angel seriously and make known what has been told to us about this child, even if we don't yet know what the meaning of it is, for it sounds like good news to me. And so when the shepherds told people about what they had seen, St. Luke tells us that all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. The shepherds, despite all that is unclear to them, seem to have grasped the meaning of Christmas. So what is it? Maybe it's something like this. You're there at the manger, and you have been given this piece of esoteric information that doesn't entirely make sense to you, and you quite can't quite see how you could make use of it. But it does seem like it could be important information at the right time, in the right circumstances. As I reflected on the information I acquired at the Tank Museum, I had the sensation 
that it was somehow similar, that I had been given this piece of esoteric information that didn't entirely make sense to me and that I couldn't quite see how I could make use of it, but it seemed, did seem like it could be important information at the right time, in the right circumstances. Look, I know it seems absurd that I purport to be sharing with you actual and legitimate information on how to disable a tank, but I promise you that what I have told you is true. And I know for a fact that there are people in the world for whom this information could be life-saving at this very moment. And to many, it seems absurd that I purport to be sharing with you actual and legitimate information about the savior of the world. But I promise you that what I am telling you is true. And I know for a fact that there are people in the world for whom this information could be life-saving at this very moment. That to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. I know that to many people, this information doesn't entirely make sense so they can't quite see how they could make use of it, but I promise you that at the right time and under the right circumstances, this is just exactly the information you will need and it will save your life. Let me put it to you another way. Yes, I want you to know how to disable a tank if you ever need to. But more importantly, much, much more importantly, I want you to know how to kneel at the crib of this child, Jesus, who was born to bring righteousness who was born to bring forgiveness, who was born to bring healing, who was born to bring peace. And I want you to know how to take this child Jesus into your heart. Of course, it breaks my heart to think on Christmas Eve that there are tanks that need to be disabled in a way, it breaks my heart that I know how to disable at least one of them. At least I know how to disable a stationary T-72 tank with less than new batteries and an engine that hasn't been started yet, provided I can sneak up from behind while the turret is facing forward and I happen to have a Leatherman multi-tool and a length of plastic tubing. Lucky for me, the possibility that I will ever need to disable a tank, a T-72 or any other kind, is pretty remote, but not everyone is so lucky. But I already know that I need a savior, a Messiah, a living Lord. The better I know myself, the more I know how much I need God. And I already know that the rest of the world needs a savior, a Messiah, a living Lord. I know this because of the tanks, you see, among other reasons. I know that we need a prince of peace. And I suppose that that's the meaning of Christmas. When, like a shepherd, you realize that the gift you have been given of knowing Jesus is a gift that seems strange and confusing, and you are not always sure what to do with it, but you know somehow that something very important has been given to you that you know could save someone's life, could even save your own life, and might even bring peace to the world if only we could tell enough people about it and get it into all the right hands and find ways to spread it around even more effectively. We could disable all the tanks and we could beat them into the most incredible plowshares. And on Christmas Eve, we remember that we don't need to sneak up behind anyone to share this good news. We can stand up on our feet, stay up late at night and sing it at the top of our lungs, the same songs that the angels sang. And someday, with 
maybe nothing but a Christmas carol, maybe that's how we'll disable all the tanks. I don't know for sure, Charlie Brown, but I hope that that's at least a part of the meaning of Christmas. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.
that they may be inspired by the Holy Family to persist in humility, forgiveness, strength, and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are suffering, for all who are ill, and for all who are in despair, for all who are far from loved ones, and for all who grieve, that they may be comforted by God's mercy and know the companionship of the Holy Family as their own family. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially all those who've died of COVID-19, for all who have died in war, and for all who have died as infants and children, that they may know the hope of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Mark the Evangelist, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Merry Christmas to you all. Please be seated. It's a great joy to welcome you here to St. Mark's on uh, this Christmas Eve. It's the first time in a few years that we've been able to have Midnight Mass as planned, as usual, and so we're very glad to be able to do that with you here today. Thank you for being here. A little known fact is that uh, the first Christmas, December 25th, also fell on a Sunday, and the little church in Bethlehem had all its regular services. And um, in honor of their fortitude, we will do the very same thing here tomorrow at St. Mark's. All of our regular services at 8 and 9 and 11 will be, uh, will be said or sung. And so if you are uh, wanting to come back to church, there is ample opportunity for you to do so. And I hope that we'll see you. If you know someone who stayed away because of the cold or because it was late, you can remind them that there's plenty of chance, plenty of opportunity for them to come to church tomorrow morning. Um, and, uh, and greet the newborn king. So that's tomorrow morning. Throughout the week, the parish office is closed and there will be masses daily at 10 o'clock. Next Sunday is the Feast of the Holy Name of Jesus, one of the principal services of the church year, and uh, we'll have our regular uh, schedule of morning services and a service of choral evensong and benediction in the evening as well. So if you have uh, finished up with your Mummer's Parade, you can find your way here in the afternoon and um, get some real religion uh, in the afternoon as well. I mean, I know the Mummers are a kind of a Philadelphia religion, but who can make sense of that? So, um, uh, so I hope you have a very, very happy and blessed Christmas, and I hope we'll see lots more of you. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, 
the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Mark the Evangelist, and with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace, with strength and courage, to love and serve you, with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May he who by his incarnation joined heaven and earth in a single peace bring you joy and peace this Christmas tide. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this night and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.